I'm a young researcher, maybe still a little naive research, because I really believe my research matter, matters. And then I'm here to teach you something that hopefully will have a little impact on your lives. Media tells us that sitting is the new smoking, sitting kills, and even things like chairs are murderers. Uh, I think there is a little problem with this excessive picture. Um, they're uh, exaggerating, and if it's true what they're saying, we're going to things like this. So if you want to buy a chair, uh, there will be a warning, and you have to be 18 or older to buy your chair. Or a nice little park in the bench, uh, little bench in the park. We'll have warnings like these, and I uh, will tell you that you you don't want to sit anymore. Um, so I'm probably exaggerating a little, and this picture is a little bit out of out of top. But um, if we're really going that, like if sitting really would be the mo new smoking, this is where we are going. Um, I've got some data for you to show you that sitting isn't the new smoking. So according to the WHO, uh, the World Health Organization, almost 5.1 million people uh, die because of tobacco use, which is 1.9 million people more than because of physical inactivity. Um, on this nice infographic, you see uh, a lot of dots. The bigger the size of the dot, the bigger the association with um, cancer, so between smoking and cancer. Um, those little dots, those are the associations for sitting and um, uh, cancer. Then um, the Surgeon General wrote a report saying that uh, 30 to 35 year olds uh, are six times more likely to die um, of a cardiovascular accident when they smoke than when they don't smoke. For sitting, this risk is about 1.14, according to a review by Lunch, which means you're uh, only 1.14 more times as likely instead of 600 times as likely to die for the cardiovascular accident. So I could stop my presentation right now and tell you sitting is not the new smoking, but I don't know if you've seen those numbers on those last slides. Um, let's have a look at them again and we'll leave out the numbers for smoking, because let's be honest, we all know smoking is bad for us. So here is those uh, data again. Um, as you can see, physical inactivity is the fourth biggest preventable risk factor um, according to the WHO, which means that 3.2 million deaths a year could have been avoided if we were all a little more active. Um, maybe the dots aren't as big as for smoking, but lung cancer, colon cancer, endometrium cancer and prostate cancer, all four uh, cancers where there is an association shown. Um, and then, of course, as I said before, for cardiovascular accidents, there is an increased risk of 14%. It might not be as big, but it's still an increase of 14%. Um, again, I could stop my talk here and end with sitting is not the new smoking, but when we sit less, we've got a lower chance for disease and we've got a higher chance on a long and healthy life. Um, I don't think this is uh, where I should finish my talk because I think it's way more important to know the guidelines, to know how to reach these guidelines by reducing our risk. Let me just tell you a little anecdote. So a couple of weeks ago, I was doing this presentation or a similar presentation like this one. And um, after the presentation, a woman came up to me and she said, um, I just heard your presentation. And I was really enthusiastic and I was like, oh yeah, um, I was thinking, what should I say to this woman? I can explain her a little more about this and I can tell her how we should do that. And then um, she said, I think you shouldn't be proud of yourself for proclaiming this nonsense. My husband died of a brain tumor and um, it was definitely not because he was sitting too much. It's, cancer is something metabolic and you people should stop inventing reasons. I stood there, really didn't know how to react. Then she walked off, and then half an hour later, I was like, now I know what to say. I should have said, I'm, I'm really sorry to hear about your husband, but you're right, cancer is something metabolic. And when we sit, our metabolism does get affected. When we sit too much, um, some enzymes don't work as good, and um, the enzymes that help break down our fat, our good cholesterol, where we need a lot of decreases, and the working of our insulin uh, drops. So our insulin isn't as, isn't as effective as it used to be. So um, from a lot of studies, uh, we can say that there is a small uh, association with the risk for cancer and uh, sitting too much. 
So um, you're right, cancer is something metabolic, and there is an association with sitting. I'm very sorry to tell you this. Um, I lost what I want to say. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, just another question for you then. Um, do you have any idea how many hours a day you sit? I'll let you think about it. Just think a little. Yeah, <laughs> too many hours, yeah, maybe. Um, if you're an office worker, you might think about all the hours you're sitting at your desk. And maybe if you're thinking a little further, you might think about the hours that you're watching television in the evening. But we also sit when we are eating, we sit when we are traveling, we sit when we are reading a book and relaxing, or when we are knitting and just catching up with some friends. So we're actually sitting a lot more than we think we are doing. Um, right now, this is how the average day, average day looks like for an adult. So we sleep around seven hours a day. We perform sport or vigorous physical activities, such as jogging, but also household work like gardening or painting, around 15 minutes a day on average. Uh, light physical activities like walking, cycling, cooking, or yeah, just cleaning is about 30% of our time, but more than nine hours a day we are sitting, which is more than half of the time we are awake. So if you leave sleeping out more than half of the time, we are sitting. Uh, research has shown that eight hours seems some sort of threshold. So if we sit less than eight hours, um, sitting is never really good for us. It's never helping us, but it won't be as damaging as when you start sitting more than eight hours. Furthermore, research also says that when we can break sitting down in 20 to 30 minute bouts, so when we're not sitting longer than 20 to 30 minutes, it will be a lot better. So I'll just give you an example how our day could look like. I know we all want to sleep a little longer in the morning and we want to press that snooze button, but let's just assume we're still sitting, uh, sleeping around seven hours a day. I also know this presentation isn't really about being more active, but this is just a time where I can say that the guidelines for physical activity or moderate and vigorous physical activities are, are, every, are actually 30 minutes a day. So a little more than we are doing now. Um, another thing you can see on this, uh, on this graph is that vigorous physical activity and sitting aren't complements to each other. There's still this big part of light physical activity. So everyone who does a lot of sports, really good, you're being really healthy, but also have a look at your sedentary behavior. It's possible that it's still a little too much. We even have a name for those people who sit all day, for example, at their office, and who are really active in the evening for just a little while. We call them the active couch potatoes. So um, we do research them as well. But as you can see, sitting, like we, we want to try to limit, limit it to eight hours and really try to break it down in 20 to 30 minute bouts. Um, it's good news, I think, because eight hours is just an hour less than what we are doing now. I promised you some simple tip, tip, tips and tricks to reduce those sitting times. For example, for office workers, when you are sitting at your office, try to make your phone calls standing. If you um, need to get your paper in from the printer, don't put your printer next to you, but put it in the corner of your office. If you need to talk to people on the same floor, don't send them an email, but just get up, go to their office and talk to them, if it's possible, of course. You've got sit-stand desks, which are desks that you can use to sit and to stand. Um, they're not always easy to integrate, but it's interesting to have a look at. And then there are these little things like software you can install on your computer. and It will give you a warning every 20, 30 minutes. It depends how you want to set it. And it will tell you that you have to get up. Um, when I'm saying get up, I'm not suggesting you go for a run. I am not suggesting you, you really get vigorously active. Just get up, use those muscles for a little while, and you're fine. Get a cup of coffee, go to the toilet. It's in the little things. Um, those are tips for office workers, of course. Um, as I said, we're also watching quite a lot of television. Um, when there's an advertising block, try to get up, stretch your legs. Again, don't go for a run, but please also don't go for an unhealthy snack to watch while you're watching television. Um, other things are try to take public transportation or walk or take the bike, which is even better. Just 
try to reduce that sitting behavior. Um, I am quite enthusiastic about what I do, and I talk a lot about it, maybe a little bit too much, because some of my friends are starting to say, yeah, I get your point. And I'm not sure if they're doing that just to shut me up or if they really get the point. I hope it's the second one, because, for example, my brother, he told me a while ago that when he has to sit for a long time, he tries to break it up and tries not to sit the whole day, but get it? And um, he says that he's got less back pain, less sore, less sore shoulders, and that he can concentrate better. Another friend of mine said that she's doing all her phone calls standing now. She says, I enjoy doing so. I don't think she really noticed any big differences, except for that she likes it. But it might not make a big impact on her health right now, but maybe in 20 to 30 years, it will have a little impact. Just as maybe after today, I have a little impact on your health as well. Um, so I've reached the end of my presentation. By now, you were all sitting for more than 20 minutes, quite a bit more, so I just suggest I suggest you all stand up for a little while, stretch those legs, use those muscles, get those enzyme <laughs> enzymes going. <laughs> and as I said before, I'm a young, naive researcher, still needs, needs a lot of reinforcement. So I suggest while you're all standing up now, just give me a standing ovation. <laughs> Thank you.